Guys, there are two questions that I get asked all the time. The first question is, how do I get that free subscription to my favorite streamer on Twitch using Twitch Prime? <laughs> but the second question, the more important one, is what exactly do you do at Endgame in ESO? Sure, the leveling looks fun, but what about when you hit level 50? What happens then? Well, fellas, I'd like to answer that question. It's an absolutely massive answer that I'm gonna try to condense into a nice bite-sized video. There's a lot of stuff to cover, so let's just sit back, relax, let's take a look at Esso's endgame experience. Now, the first thing you're gonna need to do, guys, is you're gonna have to actually reach Esso's endgame. You're gonna quest, you're gonna explore, do dungeons, whatever, and you're gonna hit level 50. And you're gonna sit there and say, yes, I did it, I'm ready now for endgame, right? No, because now you need to get to champion point level 160, and that, my friends, is when your endgame experience will truly begin. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking to yourself, oh my god, Nixium, I just got to level 50, and now I need to grind out 160 champion point levels too? That's gonna take forever. Don't worry. No, it won't. Champion points, or CP, are kind of like Paragon levels that are rewarded for doing pretty much anything in the game, and you're gonna get a ton of them really fast for doing practically nothing. You're gonna hit 160 pretty quick, that's all I'm trying to say. Now, for those that don't know how this CP system works, let me quickly explain why hitting 160 CP is the beginning of the true endgame. Really, it all has to deal with gear, but CP levels also give you these talent points that you can invest into these different talent trees to make your character more powerful. You'll swing harder, you can cast stronger spells, you'll have more health recovery, whatever. Now, you can go up to CP level 810 in ESO, but you see, 160, CP 160, that's when the gear stops scaling for your character. Now, you might be sitting there scratching your head like, what? And that's why I drew these MS Paint images. You see this? That is you, that happy little Argonian. So let's explain this. Now, let's say you're level 50 and you have a champion point power level of 61. Now, what that means is when a piece of gear drops anywhere, it's going to be level 50, CP level 61. Now eventually though, you're going to get to level, let's say CP level 80, and a new piece of gear is gonna drop, and it is going to be more powerful than that level 61 CP piece of gear. Does that make sense? And at 160, that's when this stops. Even if you are CP level 165, for example, the gear that will be dropping will be CP 160. Although, even after 160, you will still continue to get those talent points that I mentioned that you can invest to make your character stronger. Okay, so now you're ready. You hit level 50. You just hit 160 champion point level and that CP 160 gear is dropping for you. The highest of the highest. The best of the best. You are ready to go, boy. It's time for endgame, but what do you do? What do you do now, Nixium? What do you do? Well, you decide, really. Like many, if not most, MMOs, Esso's Endgame has a lot to do with gearing up, but it also has a lot to do with making your character as badass as possible in the way that you want your character to be a badass. And I'll explain what I mean by that in a moment, but the question is, first and foremost, how do you gear your character up? Well, in Esso, the developers handle gear a little bit differently compared to other MMORPGs because, you see, there are seven different paths that you can take to get gear in the game. The first path is through the open world. At Endgame, most likely, you'll have barely explored 20% of the world, so there's still tons of quests to do, delves to explore. Those are single-player dungeons, for those that don't know. There are achievements to get, treasures to find, and so on. So go on, keep questing 100% each zone. And as you quest, and as you kill those outdoor world bosses, and you fight mobs, open treasure chests, whatever, you will find overland sets of gear to make your character even more powerful. But let's say that you don't want to quest. You're done with the lore and all that stuff. Well, your second option, you could do some dungeons. 
descend deep into Esso's many dungeons and caverns, slay bosses, find treasures, test your skills on veteran difficulty dungeon bosses one day, and during these adventures, you will find dungeon sets of gear for your character. And as you do dungeons, guys, why not also go meet the Undaunted Faction, a group of NPCs outside of your faction's stronghold that will reward you with monster sets of gear for slaying veteran-level dungeon bosses across Tamriel. But, man, you don't want to just stick with dungeons, you want to raid! Well, go and get your guild together, boy, and try out some of Esso's trials, both on normal or veteran difficulty. Either way, a challenge is going to await you and your group, as well as trial sets of gear that you can attain. But as we all know, guys, getting together a ton of friends for raiding and whatever, it can be hard. So sometimes you just want, you know, you just want a big challenge for maybe yourself or just a couple of your friends. So why not try out arenas in Esso, the Maelstrom Arena or Dragon Star? It don't matter. Fight against waves of challenging enemies, fight against bosses with unique mechanics that you or maybe a small group of friends need to overcome and earn for yourself arena sets of gear. But you're a PvP player, I know. You don't got time for all that PvE nonsense, so why don't you go out and kill other players in Cyrodiil World PvP, burn down castles, take keeps, claim land for your faction, crown emperors, do battlegrounds, whatever, earn yourself some PvP sets of gear to make yourself the most powerful foe on the battlefield. Or maybe you're thinking about everything I just said and you're a little undecided on what you want to do. Well, you know what? Why not just become a crafter? Craft for yourself some crafting sets that are some of the coolest and most badass armors in ESO. Those seven paths to gear are all relevant, depending on who you are as a player. Because ESO doesn't force you to do one particular thing at max level, it just gives you free reign. No matter what you do, whether it be dungeons, trials, the Maelstrom Arena, whatever, the game will reward you with sets that will make you better at the gameplay that you enjoy the most in ESO. But this is also where it gets a little bit complicated at the same time, and it makes this video a bit tricky for me. Because you see guys, ESO is really sandboxy when it comes to gear and character customization. You can make any kind of character you want with any choice of skills that you want to use. And the point is, Sometimes you might get a set that everybody is like, wow, this set is really good, it's really awesome. But for you and your playstyle, it might suck. And some sets that might be really bad for other players might be really good for you. For example, you might use an Overland set combined with maybe another kind of set from somewhere else in the game that plays off incredibly well with the abilities that you've selected for your character and you'll be a god in PvP. It really just depends on who you are as a character and what gear works well for you. And that's really what makes ESO so special to me because really, it makes the game so replayable and fun. You never seem to stop customizing or finding new sets or new ways to make your character better at the different things that you explore and decide to do in the MMO. But beyond getting gear, there's still tons more to do in the game at max level. As mentioned before, by the time you hit CP160 at level 50, you probably won't have even explored 20% of the world. So go out, explore those new areas, indulge in new quests, learn more lore, read more in-game books and so on. Kinda like, yeah. You know, it's kinda like an RPG. You know what I mean? Hunt for achievements as you travel across Tamriel. Gather Sky Shards to become even more powerful as a character by unlocking more skill points to use. Discover recipes for food, potions, poisons, and other things that can give you the edge in PvE or PvP. Or, if you're the settling sort of player, go out, explore the world, and bring back its treasures back to your player-made house, fully decorated and designed by you. Guys, Challenge yourself to dungeons, to maelstrom arenas, to trials, to sieging castles in Cyrodiil, 
battlegrounds, crafting, or just steal from NPCs, murder them in their sleep, make the Dark Brotherhood proud of you, and then get killed by the local guard because you were stupid and walked into town with a bounty of a million gold on your head. Really? When people ask me the question of what do you do at Endgame in Esso, the simple answer is whatever you want, really. Follow a guide if you want, sure, and that'll take you through the world and it'll show you some gear that you can find, but really what you should do is, at Endgame, explore and find sets of gear and item combinations that complement your character's playstyle. Or let sets that you discover on your adventures change how you play your tune entirely. The game is so sandboxy, and it's so unpredictable, and you'll never know what you're going to find around the next corner and how it's going to change you as a player. And I like that. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I left out a ton of information from how crafting works to how does a Maelstrom Arena work to, oh my god, there's a ton of information to talk about. So forgive me for the bite-sized video, but this is just a quick overview of Esso's Endgame. Guys, leave a like if you want, leave a comment if you want, maybe correct anything that I might have said down in the comment section. I am a new player, I've only been playing for a few months, so if I got something wrong, I apologize. But either way, it's a hell of a lot of fun to make these videos for you guys. I hope you enjoyed them. Support the channel on Patreon if you want, or become a YouTube community member. And that's really all I gotta say, guys. Hope you're having a good one. I'll see you all in Tamriel. Elsewhere is on the way. New ESO expansion. And it's just a good time to be an MMORPG player. <laughs>